Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of uh, Fundamentals of Research in Medicine with Professor Fikri Abu Zidan. Uh, today's episode, it is the fifth episode of this series and our title today is Designing a Research Project. Prof, welcome, uh, how are you? <laughs> and uh, we want to listen details about uh, how a researcher can create a good research by designing it. So could you please uh, explain us what are the important you know, aspects of designing research? Yeah. Uh, Arif, again, uh, we try to make similarity with, with the life. And uh, before we start, I really need to clarify for the students what's the difference between a study, a protocol, a trial, you, 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 you listen to these and you can notice that you ask for a protocol, usually or project. A project usually can be wider than a study. So I like the students to think of studies, units. They start with a study and they gradually they can pick up with a protocol because uh, or a project. The project can be sometimes three, four years, sometimes six years, sometimes 20 years. And uh, these projects are actually a combination of studies and the the other important thing they should really understand that a study does not always depend on the number of subjects you can do a full clinical trial it's called in one clinical trial and uh, I advise them just to look uh, into the literature and see what is an in one clinical trial so even if it's a single person uh, that you are going to do a study on it's a clinical trial for that specific person, and it needs a lot of uh, understanding of uh, research design and methodology. So, usually with the students or residents, I can start even with a, with a case report. A case report needs to design in the thinking process. And if you notice in the literature, they say the abstract is structured or unstructured, but it's structured all the time. The difference is that the first one is structured mentally, while the other is structured in writing. So the thinking process should be the same. Now, the first thing you should ask yourself when you start designing a study is, what do I want to achieve? Now, I'll give a simple, always give this simple example for people to understand, is that if you are studying the temperature, and then you took a blood pressure machine and you make a full study of 300 uh, patients studying the temperature of this group, the effect of COVID-19 patients on the temperature or vaccination or whatever it is, and you started taking the blood pressure, you, your, your study is spoiled. Your design is completely flawed. You cannot fix that. And we call this type one error in design, uh, in the design. So the simple thing you should do is that it should answer your question. That's one. The second thing you should ask yourself is how can I achieve it and what are my methods to achieve it? So, it depends on what do you want. Let's say there is a very rare disease that you encounter it every few years it will be un unlikely to be useful to do a prospective study in this scenario. Maybe you need to go and do retrospective collection data collection. If you are doing a big data study, let's say you have a, a specific disease of 1,000 cases every year, it's much, much better to do a full, uh, full study, which is a prospective for data collection. So then the second step, you ask yourself, how, how, what I'm going to collect? And then to do that, you need to put your own protocol. And my advice for, for, the, for the students is to get what we call the minimum data set. What's that? Minimum data set means you select the variables that you want. Don't over select things because you, first of all, you waste your time, you dilute your question, you put an extra effort. And I really will mention this again. I learned from a very good professor, Professor Stan Tiblin, who's an endocrine surgeon. Initially, make one page protocol. And this is what we did in the Gulf War. You can be surprised. We have one page protocol and it's available in my office. And we published more than eight manuscripts on that because it's focused. It exactly tells you what you want. 
A protocol doesn't need to be uh, like uh, 10, 100 pages. Of course, the protocol is needed for the ethical approval. Sometimes it may be detailed. But in principle, you select as much as you can. Now, after you put the protocol, you ask yourself, do I need really to collect this data prospectively or retrospectively? If you trust the retrospective data, you can do that, but definitely there will be at least 30% of missing variables is, is in this scenario. If you go back for a long time, the files may be lost, information may not be entered. So I advise people, the easiest way is to have a prospective data collection, especially for diseases which, which have high prevalence. Now, then you ask yourself, what is my, my study? Is it an interventional study? Is it a diagnostic study? Is it just a case series in which really I just want to report a few number of cases? And each of these has a specific way of design. Each of them, and this is, this is beyond, uh, beyond uh, this short talk. But my, the third, fourth step, which is important, I initially I say that you have to really to know what do you want to achieve and the design should fit your objectives. Try to be as simple as possible. Know your, uh, whether you are going to collect the data retrospectively or uh, uh, prospectively. Uh, prospectively, which is which is very important. But the fourth thing which is important is that I notice many people do studies that they don't know the research methodology and the study is flawed. And at least I reviewed maybe four or five uh, papers, at least five, maybe six. People go and they say, we want to study the diagnosis of appendicitis. Okay, so what does that mean? <laughs> you have suspected appendicitis. And all their papers, and really in excellent journals, they send these papers. All of them are appendicitis. So what are you, what are you diagnosing if, you, if, the, if the sample population is appendicitis? They took the patients of appendicitis and they reported how to diagnose appendicitis. <laughs> That's not the logical way to do it. You should really get a cohort of patients who are suspected to have appendicitis and then study them. So, I mean, it's, uh, it's really very important. I'm not going into the details of design yet. They have, the students have to understand what's the difference of each design. Like, for example, you can start from the lowest uh, level of uh, evidence up to the top. The principles are there. You have to know what are you doing and you have to know whether you can achieve it or not. The design should be achievable. So you can start with a case report, case series, retrospective study. You can have a, a cohort study. You can have a, a case control study. Case control study means that you, you don't, you, you have rare cases. So you select the cases and then say retrospectively and you get a control for them or you can do a randomized control trial, you can do a systematic review. Each of these has specific principles that people have to be uh, well acquainted with. Uh, if they have problems, my advice to them is just to ask a research methodologist before they start. You can be surprised, Arif, that I got people who come to me collecting data for three years, asking for my help. And I said, oh, look to that, I spent my, I'm sorry, I can't help you. You should, you should have come to me before. Now, after collecting data for three years, this is very disappointing for the researcher, but my advice is always involve methodologists. Sometimes, which is maybe hard, I get a paper to review, and it happened maybe four or five times, and I write to the, the, to the author, I'm really sorry. Methodology is Yeah, wrong. methodology is flawed, and it cannot be fixed. You should have actually ask the advice of a methodologist from the start and you have to redo the study again because even if it's published anyone with little critical appraisal know that this paper is flawed and does not answer the question yeah so there is a kind of uh, preparation definitely needs uh, to reach a you know good design and good study at the end yeah Arif, i just want to also make the similarity design is everywhere you can design a beautiful tent <laughs> or you can design a, a, I mean, a, a high sky building, and each of them has principles. For example, a tent should have specific pillar, it should have specific way to cover, etc. The 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 uh, I mean, uh, the high buildings need to be having some resistance toward the wind, and how they really, if they they are very long, high, they, so each 
medicine is the same thing each project or uh, each uh, study has specific design if you combine them to them in one theme this is called project uh, prof uh, uh we discussed already actually in the previous episodes um, uh, about uh, creating a good research question. Of course, it is part of the design. And uh, as you mentioned, you know, for the researcher has to be very clear what they're going to achieve, what they're going to collect, how they can collect it retrospectively or prospectively. And uh, of course, uh, do you think at the beginning, uh, thinking about, you know, uh, how they can analyze them. Of course, we have a you know topic to discuss. You know how we can how we can analyze you know the data sets. But uh, do you think uh, the statistical analysis can be the part of this you know preparation? Of yeah, of course. Yes, you know, I mean uh, you can't be surprised. I mean in any project, I have decide what analysis I will do. Uh, you can't be surprised. I mean I can give you an example. I have a company called Guilford from USA, and they asked me to do a study. And then I did the study. Once I got the results in half an hour, the results are there. Simply half an hour. Why? Because I know exactly the methods. I'm not going to change it. And it was negative result for a new drug. And they called me back. While your results are negative, while another study is positive, and it was in British Journal of Pharmacology, and I looked directly to the methods. I told them we have used... Same method. Uh, we have uh, used actually a scoring system for the osteopathology. They did not. Hmm. So if you are clear about your uh, your design uh, it makes a lot of difference for example you will be surprised once in the last f f three four maybe i can say maybe ten, up to 10 years when i send the paper rarely i find a criticism for the methodology of course there's criticism maybe for the importance relevance uh, is it retrospective or not but reviewers don't argue the design why because you have to put a lot of design effort, effort. In, in putting them because that's a fatal mistake if you don't make the design of a good building what happens to it it will fall down yeah it will fall down and this is why you spend a lot of time yeah, thinking I just, about this i just stuff. remember in one of the episodes you were mentioning it took two three months to design a, you know a model yes an ultrasound model that, uh, you mentioned and actually you did the study in two days, yeah, and it, was, right. it is published in three weeks. Yeah. So uh, you spend much more time about the design and methodology on this, you know, uh, project or study than anything else. Yeah, um, Arif, it's very important, very important to, to to simplify this again. It's very important to define the question: what I'm going to answer. Simple, and the design is how I'm going to answer it and you have to think too much about what is the shortest and proper way of designing a study so and of course statistics is part of it if i get the data what type of data i'm going to get uh, what number of sample do i need because one of the errors people study very little sample and then all their study is lost yeah we have another actually episode about the mistakes the you know researchers do okay about the i i will explain that in detail <laughs> there are i mean we hope that uh, I'm not going to threaten these students. Please, I'm really trying to help you. Don't feel this is too big. No, it is basics. Logic. If you want to build a building, you have to know the shape. You can discuss, oh, I want a three-floor building, one-floor building. And then the second step, you say, okay, I don't want this building to be properly structured on pillars so it doesn't fall. The same applies for research. We want a specific thing. Do I, be, I need a two-room house then room house how high it should be what is the material of it should it be wood should it be rocks and how uh, long it will take and then <laughs> uh, of course you can go for the small details and make it better and more beautiful and uh, and I, this is i learned this from uh, professor boy club and again i'm sure he will be listening he told me once science or surgery surgery is a science but I think even now I feel that with repeated knowledge of science, it becomes an art. So designing a research is an art. You can't be surprised. Uh, the, 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 the other advice I have is that discuss the design within a group. Because group intellectual ability is much, much higher than a single person. You can see the, 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 the issue from one angle. 
but five people will see the house from five angles. And then they can tell you, oh, this part of the house is broken, please fix it. So please yeah. discuss with your group, respect the opinion of all your team, give them the chance to participate in the design, you will be surprised. How and also share. maybe a, a, another recommendation, I don't know, what do you think, but it, can it be, you know, uh, pre pre preparation actually to think about design? I mean, if you want to do a study, uh, probably there are multiple studies already published in that area or in that topic yeah. and reading literature, looking their design, what did they do, yeah. uh, what are, you know, uh, yeah, yeah. what can be, you know, the new additions to a methodology can be and then you can create a kind of difference. Uh, yeah. Maybe, I mean, the reading literature is also important. Before yeah, of course, they start, uh, yeah. Yeah. Out of, it goes to the same principles. You have to, I mean, you have to attend courses, you have to discuss yeah. courses, you have to critique papers, you have to learn from mistakes. Working as a reviewer, by the way, improves your research design so much because you start critiquing and looking what other people are doing. Yeah. But in principle, I want just to mention to the students and residents, please don't start your study before thinking deeply about how are you going to achieve uh, your project. And uh, that's what I really want to carry the message I want to okay. carry for Pro you. Thank you very much. Uh, I think uh, our next episode, it's it would be about you know the, what researchers you know do as a mistake when they are designing their studies okay thank you very much for this episode thank you very much Arif.